Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at Enterprise Connect 2025 in sunny Orlando. I'm with Sonora Jespu, the uh, uh, SVP and GM of devices, and now uh, the WebEx Suite. How are you doing, Sonora? I'm doing great, and it's fantastic to be here in Orlando, and thanks for having me. Yeah, congratulations, I suppose, is in order for adding the WebEx Suite to your job. I hope they gave you a big raise for that. So, <laughs> but, but, uh, but talk about that transition and what that, what that means for, uh, for you and for, and for the company. Yeah. No, so first of all, I'm super excited about it. And it's not like WebEx Suite is new to me. I've been working sure. in it and yeah. alongside it for a long time. But you know, when uh, uh, I think Bob Dylan said it really well. You're either busy getting born or busy dying. And I think when you get a new big task like this, it's like being born again, because you have to learn a lot, you have to go deep, you have to understand a lot of detail, and you have to meet a lot of new people, and it's been very, very exciting. Well, that's good, yeah. And um, I wanted to talk about you know, the, the WebEx value prop within the context of Cisco. I think there's mm. obviously, this is a very crowded space today, right? Mm. So we've historically got all the legacy vendors, there's a bunch of born in the cloud companies, you got contact center vendors trying to become UC vendors and vice versa. And uh, through all that time, I mean, WebEx has you know, had a big install base, but uh, it's part of the broader Cisco. And so uh, within that context, talk about how you think WebEx is uniquely positioned for the market today. Yeah, so I think what's really unique with Cisco and with WebEx is the following. Um, we're the only vendor that has a contact center calling and meeting back-end platform with an app and device front-end that's built on hmm. a fabric of AI that actually goes across from contact center through uh, WebEx suite through devices. But that stands on the shoulders of the rest of Cisco. If you think about Cisco, we know a thing or 50 about enterprise networking, about security, and about observability and, and manageability. And if you think about that entire full stack, really, it's very, very unique. And when we talk about collaboration, uh, we focus a lot on the user experience for people using a meeting or a contact center or a phone or a device. And that's super important. And, and, and we jump out of bed every morning to, to do that. The second piece, is really around the people that own and operate that service. If you think about the IT uh, organization, you think about the facilities organization and the tools they need in order to be able to scale, scale at low cost, um, Cisco is very, very uniquely positioned with that. And, and we're uniquely positioned uh, uh, because of that, because we are standing on the top of all of Cisco. So for instance, if you take Thousand Eyes, which is a fantastic tool, mm -hmm. That is now implemented all the way out, now even to our phones. It's on our video devices, it's all over. And if you think about uh, all of our phones, our video devices, but also our wireless access points, etc., those are sensors for information to be feed back into things like Control Hub and Spaces, etc. So if you think about that full stack that Cisco can provide with, you know, contact center, meeting, calling back and app and device front end, AI, and then on top of security, enterprise networking and manageability. That is truly unique. Okay, so explain to me why that matters, right? A lot of your competitors just run over the internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they would tend to say that a network's a network, mm -hmm. right? You own the network, you have a lot of control over that, you provide visibility with thousand eyes. Mm -hmm. Give me an example of where that matters. No, so I think it matters in, in uh, multiple uh, uh, places. One is around what Thousand Eyes can do, which is basically make a full analysis of your network and you will know where the bottlenecks are, you will know where your potential yeah. things that can improve. And when you say the network, yeah. with Thousand Eyes it's actually the internet as well. It's right? the internet yeah, as yeah. well. It's a full hop-to-hop -hop <coughs> analysis from the cloud all the way out to, to the device itself. So that's one thing. So you, that means you have all the information and the controls you need about that. But it's also around manageability of, uh, of your suite, of uh, your app and your devices and what you can do with that. But here comes another interesting thing. Uh, with something like Control Hub, you know the utilization of your footprint. You know the utilization of the room, uh, but you can also use it for things like slow rolling when there are no people in, in the building, etc. And you can even integrate that into what the facilities and the facilities people need. So it's 
really back to what I said in the beginning that one is actually people that are attending the meetings or actually mm -hmm. using the tools or are using the chat to the ones that own and operate. And here is where the magic comes in. Because when you have these tools that we have in Cisco, Control Hub, Spaces, that's nice, you scale much better. So mm -hmm. we have a customer, a city in Europe, that with two people went from five meeting rooms to 600 hmm. without adding resources because you had all the tools to be able to do that. That's a big difference. Yeah, and uh, uh, even the two-person team, uh, are they able to troubleshoot just as you know, effectively? Yeah. That, can, that's a small team. It's a small team, yeah. and, but we've added AI as well. So we talk a lot about AI and what's meeting in the meeting with cinematic, with all the things we can do with AI when it comes to transcribing, taking actions, etc., cetera, in, in the meeting platform, and not at least what we can do on contact center. But we also use AI when it comes to the manageability pieces. So we're able then to prioritize uh, incidents when it's happening. We're able to proactively see when things are uh, might go wrong. Um, we're able to look into into rooms and, and get information out of that. So using AI as well on the manageability side is, is absolutely key and, and we do that. Yeah, that's interesting because I think a lot of the AI to date has been, you know, from the industry is about AI to make your contact center, your collaboration experience better mm -hmm. uh, as a, from a user standpoint. Okay. You're actually using AI to improve the IT experience. Yes. Yeah. As well. Yeah. 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 And, and and not only that, sorry for interrupting yeah. you, but uh, so we use a lot of the same techniques as, as a number of the others by using large language models, by being able to have our AI <coughs> assistant help you with a lot of, uh, lot of tasks. But we also use AI all the way out at the edge. Uh, and we've been working with NVIDIA for over a decade, yeah. if you think about it. We have the Babel Labs and Chris Rowan and the team that we got in with that, which is just absolute rock stars in the things we can do there. But then we also use it for troubleshooting, for manageability. And I think that is uh, where Cisco is really different and where we have that full stack. Yeah, and um, you know, when you talk about, you mentioned security, and, and I'm I'm curious if you've seen a, a shift in customer mindset, because historically, when you think about security and collaboration or security and contact center, that's not really the buyer for security. And so often when you ask, uh, you know, if you were to ask uh, uh, an IT manager about is security important for collaboration, they'd say, sure. But yet, you didn't see a lot of action taken there, right? And so uh, with AI becoming so prominent now, and of course, you know, AI is all data driven, mm -hmm. right? So the data that you have in your data security becomes a bigger part of your overall AI strategy. Have you seen customer mindset change with respect to security and collab? Sure, yeah. but it's always been there and yeah. it's always been at the forefront. <clears throat> and also because of some of our customers, we've been doing things like air gap even. So where security has been absolutely essential, uh, we've always been working with uh, really strong encryption with AES, 256-bit long keys, etc. So we've always had that focus. With AI, it hasn't lessened the focus on security, uh, on the contrary. Yeah. And I think you will see even more and more of this. And, and you will see that there is a, a uh, need as well for sovereign cloud in, in certain areas as well. Uh, yeah. You have a, an added need for things like air gap solutions yeah. where you run that but then as well to be able to make sure that uh, when AI comes in that you're able to cover that as well. Actually, that last point on Sovereign Cloud is interesting because I have seen a big, a, a big pivot almost uh, away from the, the pure SaaS model. That, obviously, that's where the growth is. Yeah. But more customers, historically, that air gap model or the private cloud model, uh, you know, heavily re regulated verticals, mm -hmm. you know, banks perhaps or certain countries where cloud was available, but now there seems to be more interested in that and going to some kind of hybrid model, mm -hmm. uh, partially because a lot of the global issues, I think um, uh, that makes customers understand, you know, I really need more control over my data is. And, uh, and uh, it's interesting that Cisco is one of the few vendors that actually maintain that. Yeah, and it's interesting because if you look at our cloud calling as an example, yep. um, when we were sitting here a year ago, uh, uh, since then till now, we've grown by over 30%. Uh, we're now at 18 million seats on, on cloud calling. So 
cloud is super important and it is growing. But we have also maintained uh, our on-prem capabilities and we developed our on-prem capabilities, both for voice and for meetings. And these are areas where we actually invested as well because I think what we will see is that there is a mix of customers. It depends on what business you're in, it depends on what type of organization you have. And I think that having the ability to um, uh, to select from uh, from more of those is important, but cloud is for sure the big driver for us. That's, uh, yeah, cloud. although you can thank your partner NVIDIA for making uh, on-prem cool again, so <laughs> <laughs> they, they mentioned that. Now, um, uh, you mentioned cloud calling, and um, you know, voice is an, an interesting aspect of communications because we, we, because we've gotten so text heavy and we do more video and more chat, uh, you always read about how voice is dead. Now, there's a lot of verticals where obviously it's not, right? But I almost think that with the Gentic AI coming, that we're gonna see a renaissance in voice because a lot of the things we might have done through self-service or, or through text, just easier to do with voice because it's the interface we're all bored with, right? And so, what are your thoughts on, what are your customers telling you about what, they, what they're thinking with voice now? Yeah, so, uh, for us, voice has always been there and it's been essential, especially frontline workers have been using voice yeah. a little. If you run a hospital, you run a hotel, you run a big warehouse, you always need voice for those type of things and it's been there and it's, it's been prevalent always. But I think as well what you just stated, I think with Agentic AI, what's happening on you know, the uh, customer experience side, the contact center side of, of, of the house, it's a lot of transitions where there, it's basically just easier yeah. to talk to it than actually sit there and text and go back and forth. And, um, and I think that will drive uh, a lot for you, especially in that customer experience you, you want to get when you actually are in touch with an AI agent or a, a contact center. Yeah, I actually think we might get to a point um, it's funny because I asked a couple of your customers this at WebEx One. Do you think we'll get to the point where the AI agent gets so good that when you call a brand and you get a human, you go, I don't want to talk to a human. I'd rather talk to an AI. And they both said no initially. And then I said, well, think back to the early days of banking. They were both banks where people said, I'm never going to put my card into a wall and get money out or mobile check deposit. I can't trust that. And now, of course, that's all we do. Mm -hmm. Right, and so I do think the better the agentic AI agents get, they're gonna be able to solve our problems faster and more accurately. Mm. We might get to the point where for the machines over the people. Yeah. For and certain use cases, obviously. For certain yeah, use yeah. cases, but, but this is a doctor. very, very yeah. interesting discussion. Yeah. So I think these agents are getting very, very good. Like really good. Really good, yeah. they are. Uh, but the, one of the key things that we're working a lot on is also how you set the guardrails for those agents so that they can't yeah. overstep, right? Uh, and I think that, that you have the two. So you have a really good agent, you have really good guardrails, but when you're close to the guardrails, you might want a human in there. But there, and I don't think it will be one or the other um, because you can also help a human with information during a call as well. So, so I think you'll see things go both ways, but uh, you know, when you have really good agents, uh, you know, my focus is to get the job done. Yeah. And that's the outcome is the key thing. And what we are working on on the uh, customer experience side is really to drive the outcome for the company and for uh, the person that's actually calling in. Yeah, and although we don't have any guardrails for people, so maybe that's got to come next <laughs> when you think about that. So, uh, all right, so to wrap this up, we're at Enterprise Connect. Um, uh, this is an event where Cisco always makes a number of announcements. Mm. Uh, again, this year you had a number. Are there, are there any you want to call out that you thought were significant? Yeah, there are a number of things. So we have a long list of things that we're doing on, on the AI side. Uh, we have the AI agent that we're using for WebEx. We have uh, also the Cisco AI assistant for WebEx contact center, which is uh, a, a big thing. And both of these we spoke about back in the fall at Enterprise Connect. Now they're shipping, they're out there, and, and you, can actually, uh, you can actually try that. Uh, and then we've done uh, uh, an interesting thing, and that is that uh, we have now AirPlay, Apple AirPlay, Mm. also working for Microsoft Teams rooms. So I think that really shows something about what Cisco can do with Airplay our, for, our... Airplay for Teams. Yeah. yeah. 
You didn't see that one coming. Either. No, I did not see that coming. So <laughs> that's interesting. Actually, that opens up the addressable market for teams quite a bit too. Yeah, it, it mm. does, but it's really about providing the different choices uh, for uh, for how you actually wireless share. Uh, I mean, you can use the Microsoft mechanisms, you can just use the Cisco mechanisms, and now you can actually use uh, Apple AirPlay. So when did that, that change at Cisco? I think it's, uh, let's drill down on the Microsoft partnership, because for a long time, I think most people would have said you two are mortal enemies. Yeah. Yeah, but now you're in the Microsoft's keynote, they're in your keynote, you guys seem like best friends. Yeah. But what's going on with you two? No, I mean, it's, uh, it's doing the right thing for the customer. Uh, for us, it, was, uh, it started, we went out, we asked 3,800 of our biggest customers, how many meeting platforms do you use? And, you know, 85% said we use two or more meeting platforms, you know. I, and I think most are in the or more, actually. Yeah, and yeah. it's or more. Yeah. There's actually more using four than one. I can believe that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you think about that, I think WebEx meetings is the best thing ever. But I can say that I'm blue in the face when the real uh, reality of that is that people use WebEx and something else, or they use Microsoft or something else, or Zoom or something else, then interoperability is key to be successful for all of these customers. When they talk within their own org, when they talk to a customer or to a sub-supplier or to a partner or what have you. So I think interoperability is the name of the game. And we realized that and we've been leaning in on interoperability ever since. Yeah, well good, I'm glad you're doing that. This is something the industry's needed for a long time. Yeah. So, anything else you want to add? No, thank you for having me. It's yeah. good to be here in Orlando and uh, I can't wait to uh, uh, demonstrate all the new things with some great demos and some uh, great uh, uh, things we want to show you on the keynote on Tuesday. Yeah, well it's always good to see it in action. So, uh, so we've got the Cisco Advantage being the platform, Security, you know, networking, right? Interoperable with Microsoft, and of course, AI pervasive across the suite. Absolutely. Okay. So, on behalf of Snorri Jespu from uh, Cisco, I'm Zia Skirvall from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time on my next episode of Zcast. Mm -hmm.